The time is coming when the human race will get to the moon with rockets. Private companies won't want to do this. How are they going to make money? By charging for the ride. Those crazy billionaires competing with each other. Modern day rocket man wants to send you to Mars. Difficult, dangerous, good chance you'll die. The private industry space race, it's on. We tend to think that space exploration and human spaceflight is all about governmental agencies like NASA. But it wasn't really always like that. Some of the very first steps by the early rocketry pioneers were funded by the private sector. In the US, it begins with the University of Clark professor Robert Goddard. It's 1920 and he publishes a method of reaching extreme altitudes, mentioning that rockets could be used to carry payloads to the moon. They called him the moon man and laughed. The Times editorial writer implied that your husband didn't even know high school physics. He did not let such things deter him from his experiments. In 1926, Goddard successfully launches the first liquid-fueled rocket. Money from the family of the mining magnate Daniel Guggenheim soon follows. They provided him funding in today's dollars uh, at the scale of tens of millions of dollars. What's interesting is that at the very start of this period in the 1920s, uh, there was actually a great amount of enthusiasm and a great amount of belief in the potential for these private rockets to go to space. The German war machine gets underway. The Second World War gives rockets a whole new meaning. And then the, the knowledge of rocketry became critical to uh, Cold War, and in the 50s and 60s, rocketry was almost exclusively a governmental affair. The private sector, in terms of companies, uh, was essentially uh, working as contractors to the U.S. government. It's not until 1982 that a serious effort is made to build a privately funded rocket. The idea comes from a Texas businessman, David Hanna Jr. Conestoga One is pieced together from a repurposed ballistic missile. It may not have had the majesty of an Apollo or the thunder of a shuttle, but it flew, and that's what counts. Everything speeds up at the turn of the millennium when freshly minted millionaires take interest. One of them is Jeff Bezos. I, I, I don't actually hold out great hopes, but if I could do anything, I would like to go uh, help explore space. A few months later, he sets up Blue Origin. Then Elon Musk starts SpaceX, and yet another tech millionaire, Anusha Ansari, and her family promise to foot the bill for X Prize. This is a $10 million award for reaching the industry's holy grail, a reusable manned space vehicle. Two, one, ready. Fire. In 2004, Spaceship One wins the prize. There it is, a craft that has been to space and back today, right in front of you. Richard Branson buys the rights, turns it into Virgin Galactic, and in the same year starts accepting commercial reservations for future suborbital flights. Although we are seeing a lot of billionaires have interest in space flight, their investments still pale in comparison to governmental investments. And they have now managed to partner, in many cases, with U.S. government agencies. And NASA, for example, is, in most years, SpaceX's primary customer. But there are setbacks. Local company's mission for NASA explodes into a ball of fire and debris. Deadly crash involving Virgin Galactic's Spaceship Two. A SpaceX rocket bringing supplies to the International Space Station. As you can see there, it exploded. Eventually, in 2015, Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket becomes the first to take off and land vertically after reaching space. Shortly after, SpaceX goes even further, sending its Falcon 9 to orbit altitude. The other major milestone will be the first tourists on commercial suborbital vehicles. And I'm not going to predict who, uh, who's going to be there first, but the hope is that by having more competition amongst commercial companies and by leveraging uh, advanced technologies that we're going to be able to reduce the cost of going into space. Launch. 2019 is the year that SpaceX and Boeing are gearing up to finally take astronauts up to the International Space Station. The first private lunar lander is on its way to the moon, and Chinese companies are joining the space race as well. For well over 100 years, people have been dreaming and thinking and planning for a future for humanity beyond this planet. Uh, and that includes a future for humanity on the surface of the moon, a future for humanity 
on Mars, and even farther still. And as long as we have a social goal of continuing to expand our knowledge of the cosmos, then the ambitions and dreams of individuals are going to be an important part of uh, realizing those goals.